Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, when folding phones first started making their way to the market, my first impression was, you know what, but why though? And I think that's the reason why I wasn't an early adopter of phones like the Galaxy Z Fold. It's always piqued my interest, but I never pulled the trigger. But when Samsung recently announced the fourth iteration of their flagship folding device, the Galaxy Z Fold 4, I thought to myself, it is time. And look, I've had this phone for less than a week, and remember, this is my first folding device, so take my first impressions with a grain of salt but dude, this thing is pretty great. It's truly unlike any other phone I've ever had and I could totally understand why there's such fanfare around it. Now, does that mean I think it's worth the pretty ridiculous $1,800 price tag? Spoiler alert, the answer is gonna be no for most, but maybe for some, let's talk about it. Okay, first, let's talk about physical design. It's gonna be the most immediate thing you're gonna take notice of if this is your first folding device. So my first takeaway as soon as I got this into my hands is how well the Galaxy Z Fold is put together. It's a premium device through and through with the ultra tough Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and back and Samsung's armor aluminum frame bringing it all together. This does make the Z Fold 4 a pretty hefty device, something that no doubt contributes to the premium feel in the hand, but a possible area of concern when it comes to actual day-to-day -day use. Now, arguably, the most important area of the build is going to be the hinge that opens and closes this massive 7.6-inch internal display. With the regular opening and closing of this particular component, it is critical that it's built to perfection in order to prevent any early wear and tear. And honestly, as this is my first foldable phone, I gotta say I'm super impressed at how nice this feels. Opening up the Z Fold 4 is simple to do, not a lot of pressure is needed, so it doesn't feel like you're prying the phone open, but it's also not in any way flimsy to where it feels like cheap components are being used. Used, I could tell a lot of thought went into its design. Plus, Samsung has really put this hinge to the test to ensure operational excellence, so it's nice that from a user experience standpoint, the opening and closing of the Z Fold 4 is going to be confidence-inspiring to say the least. And I gotta say, clacking this thing shut is really addicting, and it's a really new sensation when it comes to smartphone usage. This complex design is complemented with a strong IPX8 dust and water resistance rating, and overall, I have to say I'm really impressed. This is by far the most unique phone I've ever used, and though I do understand an argument could be had around the general aesthetic associated with the design, there's no doubt that it's an extremely well put together device and is premium through and through. But let's talk about by far the most important aspect of the Galaxy Z Fold 4's design that makes this phone so special, and that of course is its displays. So one of the big improvements that Samsung brought to the Z Fold 3's design was making the front display a full edge-to-edge -edge screen, which mirrors most flagship non-folding devices today. And what we have here is a 6.2-inch AMOLED that lives up to the class-leading Samsung name, and it looks fantastic. Colors pop, everything is super sharp, and it can get surprisingly bright even in direct sunlight. It also has a variable 120Hz refresh rate, so you get that super smooth UI navigation, which is a very nice touch to the front panel. The Z Fold 4 does increase the width of the display while reducing the height also lightly, and even though I do appreciate those adjustments, you still kind of get that remote control feel in the hand with this unusual aspect ratio. It's nothing I'd characterize as bad from a user experience standpoint, but it does take some getting used to. And look, I guess most if not all folks who pick up this phone will be more than willing to deal with this minor adjustment. I mean, it's a relatively small price to pay for access to quite possibly the most immersive display on any mobile device, period. My first initial reaction to opening up the Galaxy Z Fold was an unabashed wow. It's been a legitimate hot minute since I've been this taken aback by a smartphone, and it immediately opened up this dimension of what I could do with this thing, and it was refreshingly exciting. The mammoth 7.4-inch display is also a super high-quality AMOLED panel, and it really takes content consumption to another level. Watching videos and playing games is very engaging and fun to do, especially if you're looking to get a long session in. But honestly, my favorite content to consume so far has just been the news. It feels more like I'm reading a magazine or a book, and it is very nice having so much text on this beautiful screen. The display also has a 120Hz variable refresh rate, which does come off even smoother with these large dimensions, and everything comes off silky and stutter-free. Now, the biggest area of concern I had with the Galaxy Z Fold 4 was the crease in the center and how noticeable it would be when open. I gotta be honest, I do notice it from time to time at particular angles and when swiping across it with my finger, but I'm surprised at how much I'm not bothered by it. The majority of the time, you really don't notice a thing, and you're usually so immersed by whatever's on the display, it's kind of hard to get distracted. And in order to maximize that immersion, Samsung even integrated these pixels that could be turned on and off over the front-facing camera, so it looks as though it's not even there. Again, full transparency, you can notice it at certain angles, but it seems to be a major improvement from the Z Fold 3, and when facing the phone dead-on, it does a pretty superb job at masking it out.
All in all, the displays here are really impressive. I've only really scratched the surface at what you can take advantage of with a design like this, and I'm pretty taken away at how well this hardware is integrated together. None of it seems out of place, and it's surprisingly intuitive when it comes to use, and man, it's a ton of fun. Okay, so I'm actually gonna hold on going over the performance and features of the Galaxy Z Fold 4 for my comprehensive review that I'm putting together. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because that's coming very soon, but here are some important things to keep in mind. First, this phone is powered by the latest Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 processor. Great for all of you who want the latest and greatest. An important thing to note, it has a pretty conservative 4400 milliamp hour battery. Now, word on the street is Qualcomm's newest chip does really well with efficiency, so hoping it'll translate to solid battery life in addition to fast performance. I'm putting that to the test as we speak, so more to come soon. Now, I did want to quickly go over my initial thoughts on camera quality, and it's an important topic as previous iterations of the Z Fold lacked in this area, which is kind of confusing given that we know Samsung can do a lot better, and because of the sheer cost of this phone. That's probably the reason why the Z Fold 4 has stepped it up with its hardware, particularly with its rear cameras, equipping them with the same high performing sensors as the Galaxy S22 Plus, and the performance is solid as to be expected. Samsung made some notable adjustments to its computational photography approach to make the still images coming out of the Z Fold 4 sharp with superb dynamic range and colors that are way more balanced than before, making for some more accurate, natural looking pictures. Having the ultra wide and the three times optical zoom gives you maximum coverage when it comes to focal lengths and they all perform pretty well within their own right. Now the Z Fold 4, believe it or not, does come with two additional cameras, the selfie camera on the outer panel and the semi hidden selfie camera on the inside. The one on the outside performs okay. In good lighting, the selfies come out decently sharp and you get some bright saturated colors and pretty okay dynamic range. It unfortunately starts to get worse with the selfie camera on the inside. Not sure if it's because of the pixels covering the sensors, but pictures come up pretty muddy, particularly when in low light conditions. Now before you throw the baby out with the bathwater, hold on because Samsung actually has a really elegant solution to this Z Fold selfie problem. Because of the Fold design, you can actually use the much better performing cameras on the rear for selfies and get a really big viewfinder in the process. It is a bit cumbersome at first, but you do get used to it and you do for sure get way better quality selfies this way. Now, when it comes to video, the quality is commensurate to what's coming out of the latest Galaxy S flagships. You get the 8K 24 frames per second that performs well, despite it eating up all your internal storage. And the 4K 30 and 60 look solid, some of the best video coming out of a non-iPhone. So overall, it's only been a short amount of time, but I gotta be honest, the Galaxy Z Fold 4 has been a ton of fun to use, and I'm legit excited to see how it grows on me over time. Now, in terms of whether or not it's worth it, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the phone's price. The staggering $1,800 price tag is nothing to take lightly, and even though the Z Fold 4 is 100% a premium device that can do a ton, it's gonna be hard to recommend this to most everyday consumers. That said, the major one exception here would be as if you have a relatively new Samsung phone that you could trade in. Samsung is quite generous as it gave me $900 for my S22 Plus trade-in, making the Z Fold 4 a bit easier to finance. I mean, it'd be almost impossible for me to get that much trying to sell on my own, so trading in really was the best option for me. Now, I do recognize as this is my first folding phone, there is a chance that the novelty will wear out and I may change my tune in the coming weeks and months, but so far, the Galaxy Z Fold 4 is pretty great, I'm not gonna lie, but let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's a device you'd actually pony up and get? Or is it something you'd never consider for a multitude of reasons? Curious to get your thoughts, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Okay, that's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys find it useful. Again, I really appreciate it. Check out these other reviews if you're looking for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.